Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. This is part 7 on the transformation of my XF Falcon into a replica race car. I, I did it up to look like the Peter Jackson Racing EB Falcon and the livery was also used on the Ford Sierra Cosworth of the early 90s. So this livery was uh, raced on a EB Falcon in 1993 that won the Australian Touring Car Championship at Bathurst. So I decided it looks pretty cool and that's the reason I painted my car. It's not the exact model that the um, paint job was on but that's just why I painted it because I liked it. It looks good and I decided I could make it look good. It turns heaps of heads. So this is episode 7. I've done all the videos up to this one. And this video is just taking us through the clear coat on the body. So uh, the base coat was the previous one, and now this is just clear coat. It's relatively unedited. It's just I put the two two videos together, and I didn't even speed it up. I thought I'd leave it in real time for this video, and it got us to about 18 to 19 minutes. So I'm using the Deville S GTI Pro on this job with the T2 air cap. Transtech air cap and the spray gun settings I used on this job was three winds out with the fluid so wind the fluid needle right in and then there's a little uh, notch on it so that you can gauge how many turns you come out and you come three full turns out and then I've opened the fan right up and then I've set the pressure to approximately two bar maybe a touch under so uh, in PSI, it's probably about 27 PSI with this gun. Uh, since painting this, I've actually been uh, received a brand new GTI Pro Light or Tenka Techno Pro Light, it's known in America, and um, uh, slightly different settings using that gun. But I'm pretty happy with how this job came up. It's my own car. I um, actually just had someone asking me this morning in one of the comments on one of my videos they said oh so if you did your own car would you uh, what would you go for the saving paint uh, saving a couple of dollars and use some cheaper paint or would you uh, still use standoffs and go for the quality and the answer is I would use standoffs because this is my car and I did use standoffs on it I happily paid a couple of extra dollars uh, for and got the quality the better quality so here we go for a top up, just take note of when I'm topping up on my first coat to my second coat it'll actually give you an idea of how much, uh, how wet I'm putting it on. So I was able to do the quarter panel, the, the roof or the turret and then the other driver side quarter panel with one coat on the first coat but we'll have a look at how much there is on the second coat. I'm going to use a hell of a lot more paint on the second coat because I've slowed down and I'm um, wanting to get it on a, a bit heavier, a bit wetter. Actually just took took the um the car down to Fremantle in this is in Perth, Western Australia. If if any of my viewers are from Perth you should come down and check it out. They've, they've got a um custom coffee custom car and coffee is the name of the um the the club that they've got down there. It's just at a car park in Fremantle, south south of Perth. So if anyone's in the area you should start coming I'm gonna be going there a bit more often so Come and check it out if you want, want to actually have a look at the car. It gets lots of good feedback, everyone likes it. So. I've got a Facebook page, there's a link in the comments box with all of my videos to that. More than welcome to check it out. All my videos get linked. Uh, I, I post a link on my Facebook page to all these YouTube videos I put up. I'm constantly putting them up too. There's one episode on this uh, XF each week I've been putting up and I'll be continuing until all the footage is finished. Uh, in the coming coming weeks we can look forward to uh, doing the panels. Next week we'll be doing the panels and in the next couple of weeks we'll end up doing the racing stripes down the side. Uh, if you want to have a look at the car once it's all finished off at the end of this vid I've got a quick uh, view of the car as it is at the moment. It's just about finished off. I've just got to get around to putting the rocket cover back on. I've got it re-chromed, I've just got to put it back on now. 
just making slight adjustments to the air pressure as I go there. I think I'd uh, back it off a little bit. Sometimes the air pressure will climb up and fluctuate, go up and down a bit, depending on the air compressors you use. We you, you use one of the old ones, it's, it's a great compressor, it can definitely keep up with the um, uh, busy workshop, but sometimes you will get fluctuations with the old ones, but if you're using the screw compressors, the, the new electric ones, then uh, air screw compressors, then you probably find you won't get much fluctuation and they'll keep a steady uh, air pressure the whole way through. So this bumper bar has the uh, racing stripes through it too. The bottom's blue, there's two lines that run through it as well, two racing lines. So this car is actually painted up uh, to look like a cigarette packet. Peter Jackson, if you don't know, which is the livery that's painted in, in Australia, is a cigarette brand. Um, and this is how the cigarette packets used to actually look. And the racing number is 30, which you'll see at the end on the vid. Uh, um, the racing number is 30. And it was that was um, uh, how they came in, in a packet of 30. So it's Peter Jackson 30. So that's that first coat finished off. And now we start back again at the start. Back over to the quarter panel again. I would have given it just a few minutes in between uh, coats. Not too long. I've got the, press, uh, the temperature in the booth up to about 25 degrees. This is actually a really old spray booth, this one. Uh, it looks like it's straight out of the 1950s. I'm sure it's probably a bit, a little bit newer than that, but it could be a 60s, 70s spray booth. But you can still get really good uh, results out of an old spray booth. It turns out that I didn't even uh, hose it down, but if you're worried about getting a few bits of dust in it, um, that's the kind of thing you can do. We just got the fire hose, drag the fire hose in, and um, hose the walls down, hose those uh, bottom grates down, just to um, help any of the dust to stick to the floor. So most of the footage is pretty good, that's why I left it unedited. It's most mostly focusing on what I'm doing. I'm pretty happy with the, the setup I've been using on this GoPro lately. Just about got the right settings on it so we can catch some good first person view footage, point of view footage. They've noticed on this second coat I'm slowing right down. I want to just put just get it on really nice and wet. Turned out that I never polished this car. Uh, there was one or two little bits of dust in it, but I can live with that. It wasn't a full restoration. Um, it was a just a repaint. It was a bit of a patch up on the rust holes, fix a few dents, which there wasn't many anyway, and um, just a repaint. So this is my own car. I mentioned earlier so the only person that we have to keep happy is myself and I was more than happy with it so everyone else seems to like it too the um, the best advice to get finishes like this is just to watch it going on watch your paint going on and um, just go on real heavy like Obviously they don't go on too heavy or else you'll get runs, but you can obviously lay it on a lot heavier on the roof, bonnet and boot on the flat panels than what you can on the, the side panel. And um, this is another uh, good thing about using the good quality paints. You can uh, put it on a lot heavier, get a lot nicer of a finish, and you won't lose the gloss level and you won't have it dull off because... Um, Sometimes if you put too much paint on, it can overload with the paint and it can end up dulling off a little bit. Um, and then uh, you'll have to polish it up to get that gloss level. But whereas I'm using Standox, if you're using Glazerit, Standox, any of those real good quality German paints, then you'll find they're not going to dull right down like some of the cheaper paints do. So that's what I was saying before, how on my first coat I was able to get the quarter pan both quarter panels and the roof done but on this second coat because I'm putting it on so much heavier I was only able to do the quarter panel and the roof before I needed to top up so that's an idea of how much more I used on my second coat so I'm putting it on that much wetter so I decided to wind a fluid in an extra half turn so I'm on two and a half turns for the um for the side panels 
because you've got to be a bit more careful so that you don't get runs. And just holding the gun a little nice and close. Go nice and quick. That's how you're going to get it as flat as you can. You're never, never going to be able to get side panels dead flat without polishing them. So if you are looking for a dead flat finish, just sometimes you're better off just uh, doing your best and then giving it a quick sand back and polish it. So the way I ended up doing this job was um, changed halfway through doing it. I originally was going to paint the insides, which I'd done uh, the day prior to this day. Uh, this is day two of paintwork. Um, I was originally planning on doing the insides, then bolting my panels back on, and then I'd have my car back on the Monday or Tuesday, and I'd be able to drive it around, and then maybe the next weekend I'll have to paint the exterior panels. But I came in on the second day this day, and I just thought, you know what, I'm here now, I may as well just paint it. So that's why I went about it this way. Um, usually you may do a job like this and paint all the inner jams at the same time, but it actually ended up that doing it this way worked in my favour in the, the way that um, sometimes when you're doing the insides with all the door jams and stuff like that, you can end up having little bits of dust flying out of inside those crevices and um, dry spray coming out when you're painting in there and landing on the exterior panels, which is, if you get a couple of little bits of dust on the inside, it's no real big deal, you're not uh, really admiring in there, but you don't want that, that dust to fly out onto the exterior panels. So. Um, it did end up working out quite well doing it this way because I could then just focus on I did the engine bay as well um, But not much flew out of there and the job was quite clean and Yeah, I was quite happy with how it came out It ended up turning out that around that suspension tower. I decided that it would look better if I just sprayed it black um, So I ended up uh, spraying the black over on those suspension towers, but the bulk of these uh, skirts and the radiator support panel there ended up staying blue, so quick look under the bonnet at the end of this vid too. Like, comment and share my videos, dislike if you really don't like them, subscribe to my channel. There's a link at the end. Keep up to date with all my latest work. So, I've started to run out of things to say. Um, I may as well just um, give you a bit of background information on me as a person and what brought me to um, doing this kind of work. And so, I was a 17 year old kid. I always liked uh, cars as a kid. And my grandpa and uncle were spray painter panel beaters, and an apprenticeship came up through one of their friends. So. That's where I got started at as 17. I then um, moved over to Western Australia to pursue a job in the mines. Recently, after doing it for 12, this job for 12 years, I then left the trade and went exploration drilling for a year in the Western Australian mines and then came back to spray painting. And I've always wanted to make these kind of videos for a long time, since 2011, I've wanted to make these kind of videos and I finally got the chance to do it where I'm working now. Uh, the boss is a really good guy and uh, they're happy for me to make these videos. I can imagine that there's certain places that you may work and the bosses would, uh, wouldn't would like it but they're really really good guys, friendly, everyone where I work it's a good place to work at. So. This boot lid was nice and clean. There was one little bit of dust, or one big bit, it, it actually was, but um, I'd rather sooner have one big bit than 100 million little bits because it ended up that that big bit, the spoiler ended up covering it up anyway, so it worked out well. So I'm just giving it that extra turn back out, which I turned it in for the side panels there. Going nice and slow on the boot, so we lay it on to get it to flow out nice. So Standox Crystal Clear Pro is what I'm using for the clear coat here, with the HS hardener in it, and 10% VOC thinner. I like the VOC thinner in it, it seems to um, make it dry real nice, keep that gr 
good gloss to it. And I also use Standox base coat. This is a custom made colour, made it up yourself. I just uh, had a look at the, um, the photo of the car on the internet that I found that I wanted to make it look like and just had it on my phone and just eye matched it to something that I thought was pretty close. So. After we've done this bar, we've got a quick look. Quick look over the rest of the clear coat. And then we've got to look at the car when it's finished off as it sits now. After that, we've got a couple of links to a couple of my other popular vids and a subscription link too. That wraps up the body. As I say, next up we've got the, the panels will be the next episode. So it came out pretty well. You can see it's pretty nice and flat. You, you're going to see just about everything in these lights and there's not much to see. So No real orange peel in that. If you follow these, uh, these guidelines I've handed out, then you should be able to get exactly the same results. Questions will be happily answered. I've decided questions are better off in a open form rather than sent as a private message as everyone can join in the conversation and also learn from your questions as well and possibly save them from asking the same questions. Private inboxes, I don't even check my YouTube inbox, so... The car and it's finished off now. I, I've, I've decided I want to get those fender decals made it a little bit bigger. I think that it needs a bit more, it needs something else there. That's the brand of carburetor I've got on my car. Put the bonnet scoop on too, which looks nice. Just waiting on putting on that rocket cover there. I've got it chrome, got it chromed up. Got another standoff one I'm gonna put on the fender too. My sign rider's making up at the moment. Pretty happy with that front windscreen one, it looks pretty cool. I'm gonna get another rear windscreen one, the same as the front done up to. Thinking of putting an exhaust tip on it as well. Might see if I can get a chrome one made up. I just touched up the um, the tires there, did that myself with uh, just a paintbrush. I'm just showing you that the bolts there which I've gone and touched up around the whole car, finished it off nicely. It's a 250 cross flow engine in it, pretty popular engine. Big six, straight six. Check out these links if you haven't already seen them. Thanks again for watching, this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.